We're here. Who's that? Look at over there. Fantastic. Hey, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with sculptors, carvers, and multi-talented artists from around the world. If you're a fan of the show and you like what we do, give us a like and a follow on the platform that you're watching us on, and let us know in the comments where you're watching from. My name is Paul Dever. I'm an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts. And with me, as always, is my co-host, an artist and sculptor from Tucson, Arizona, Matt Harper. Hi, guys. Just hey, how you doing? There. Hey, that looks like me, though. Look at that. Yeah, that one looks there like you. This one looks There's a little bit more guy. like me. Yeah, big fella. Of course. Tonight, yes. our guest is a multi-talented artist who has been creating beautiful stoneware, jewelry, tile, and amazing sculptures for more than two decades. Please welcome to the show from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Christina Orthwine. Welcome. Paul, we need to get one of those big uh, sound board. I mean, like the right. We need people. we need some applause there. That was now, two, two people clapping. It's just you know, it's too much. But like a applause. soccer stadium, like a yeah, yeah the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, I'll incorporate. You know, we'll do it in post edit. We'll get it. We'll get it. Uh, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't watch this part. Just there'll be more. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> Christina, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Your work is amazing. Yay! I'm so excited to be here. So cool. I can't wait to get into it. So one thing that we do on the show, obviously, is we carve every week. And so we take a brief minute at the beginning of every show to go back and look at what we achieved last week. Yeah. In yeah. one way or the other. Last week, it was a robust alien. I don't know what I was thinking, but <laughs> he's, wrinkly. he's wrinkly. He's wrinkly. Uh, you know, I love this thing too much. Okay, so this was a butternut squash, probably the last one you're doing of the year, I assume, right, Paul? Now that Pretty much of the season, yeah. yeah. Of the season, yeah, uh, yeah, correct. Yeah, and I, it, you use the form of that so perfectly, making that that whole bottom chin and the the whole the double eye. Anyway, I, I really like it because he it digs like to me. It's that skin, that rumply fat skin. Anyway, I, you you nailed it. It was really See, cool. well, you it's said like fat. Juicy. Fat is robust. Yes, juicy, okay. robust. I, I, there's so many different ways I could have went with it. I just went with the only thing that seems alien to me is more than two eyes. <laughs> He's like a parasite kind of blobby thing. What's on the, is this a, something on the chin? Yeah, I, you know what it is? I I took some. I took a round piece, almost like a, just a long thread, and chopped it up, and I put it in certain points. Just to give reference to make it look a little more symmetrical, like there's one on the forehead to kind of align yeah. the nose yeah, with the chin. Yeah. And I put a couple on the chin. It just kind of aligns your eyes so it doesn't look so squashy, if that's a word. Oh. I, really, you know, I dig yeah. it. He's really it cool. Wait, now, the right, big question, Paul, oh, do you like it? No. <laughs> no. How could you not like that? That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, you got to be your own worst critic, right? So, <laughs> I if there was a point in time where I, I started having all these ideas in my head and um it just as things progress I'm like I like it I don't like it I like it I don't like it and then it was like I gotta get it done like I gotta pull the trigger and I mean I put a lot of work into it for the wrinkles so I'll give it that that takes time I like that process Matt and I yeah. love putting I, wrinkles in subtracting yeah, there's up. something there's something about it like wrinkles like again that's probably why it's so difficult to do like female forms at least for for me and Paul probably because you can get really gnarly, cool wrinkles with some old dude, you know, and, and uh, we certainly love uh, that process a lot. Uh, women wrinkle too. Let's not I be know, sexist. but they just, it's, they're just not true. Not true. Not true. Not true. No, women, per women are perfect. Then. Women are perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Well, here's my, here's my submission. Yes. There we go. Oh, so no, we'll talk about the chin on, chinny chin chin on that. Yeah. So I, I I turned the pumpkin I had to to its side and kind of had that rounder, more like base feature to it, and then wanted to do kind of like the quasi giant eyed big alien. But this guy's so fat because he's got like triple chins and he's kind of emerging from a fat head or something. So you know, it's it's part of the, the anxiety and fun of the wheel. Um, Christina, every week we have to do this nonsense yeah. and put ourselves through more anxiety than we really want to, but. It, it helps us grow, right? Right, Paul? Oh, the spinning, I, yes. I was picturing a potter's wheel when you said that. I'm like, you do these on the oh. wheel? <laughs> my, that my would be a great reference. I, well, I wish I that have, was the case with I our tried, wheel because then I could keep spinning it. If it hits something I don't like, I could just hit the pedal again. Well, one time I tried, tried carving a watermelon on the potter's wheel. On like, the potter's wheel? Yeah, well, yeah like, 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 a, like a lathe. Mm -hmm. Like a lathe, yeah, it, with, with, a, with a ribbon tool like that. And I, yeah, and I was trying to lathe it, and it didn't work at all because the skin of a watermelon is so um, jaggedy. I feel mm -hmm. like with a pumpkin, it might actually work. 
Skin. Yeah, well, if you, I, I'll bet oh, if you okay. took the skin off a watermelon, that might do the trick. This sounds like a. This sounds like a secondary yeah, episode. Pumpkin, I'm like, pumpkin, we all get potter's wheels and, and perishable items. I will. I will try lathing a potter, a, a pumpkin, on my potter's wheel and and send you guys a photo. Ooh, I'd love I, to see I, it. I don't. That's I nice. don't have a pumpkin right now, but. Okay. I'll let you know. For, first one of the season. Just do, get a ribbon tool it's and early. go on. Go on so, Maddie, before we go off of yours, somebody had a great comment when you posted this, and I thought yeah. it was hilarious, which is Don Knotts. Oh Once you God. see it, you yeah. can't. Yes. <laughs> oh, you're right. So, <laughs> Don Knotts. Oh, you're <laughs> right. This is that fish guy. Oh, my gosh. You're right. Yeah, Mr. Honestly, Limpet. that improves it a lot. I mean, it's okay. fabulous already, but like. <laughs> when you can you know, see. Maybe I was, I was yeah. channeling him, but I didn't even know it. How's that? You were Mr. Furley. Mr. Furley. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, great carve, man. Right. Great carve. Thank well, you. So, as we've mentioned before, Christina, we'd like to introduce you to the third member of Carvers and Creatives responsible for our carving challenge tonight. It is the wheel, aka the center spinner, and I'm going to explain it to you right now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to spin the wheel twice. The first time is going to be the inner spin, which is the subject or character we're going to try to carve. Second spin will be the emotion or attribute to which we have to apply to the first spin. So our choices tonight are Fishman, Hillbilly, Skull, Guest Choice, so have one ready, Undead, Hag, Vampire, Alien, Frank, and Voodoo. What's Interesting. Frank? Frankenstein. Uh, I'm, too lazy to write Frank oh, oh. I'm too lazy to write Stein. Although one time oh, wow, we did right. actually both do different Franks. <laughs> I think I did Frank Sinatra, you did Frank from Sunny. It's from It's Always Sunny. I did Danny DeVito, basically, yes. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you know, you gotta take curves. Yeah. Okay, so second spin will be emaciated, distraught, shocked, guest choice once again, crazy, robust, excited, furious, sad, or trauma. So that being an attribute, right? It's like, here we go. Spin number one. Are you ready? Oh, voodoo. I was gonna say, okay. if it landed on Fishman, I'd be like, wow. You got another Don Knotts in you there, Maddie? I know, oh my God. Okay, so okay, wait, wait. Okay, just let me let me let me process that for a second. Oh, you gotta process it? Hold on, we're processing. Okay, processing. now I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay. All right, spin number two. So I don't know how we're gonna put these two together. No, we can't. No, we do do we go with wait, robust? Robust voodoo? I don't know. Yeah, wait, you, you want, you want to be the third I judge? I feel like would why would you not do it? Like you have to go by what the wheel says. You know, yeah, I, I think you might be right. You right. keep rolling until you get something you like. What's the point of the wheel? Well, no, good point. We just said we did that one last week, and that would be the only. Oh, reason, you're but... right. Good call. No, that's valid. I see. She does have a good point, though. Yeah. <laughs> there has been a time where we've been like, eh. actually, not us. The guest has done that. We have. I would say that if you're not going to be willing to do it, you shouldn't leave it on the wheel. But yes. Uh, nope. Uh, but also, nope. you know, said, you well, it. we got to do it. We got. It's robust. Okay. It's not like if it was. Um, sad, which is an emotion, I'd say no, because that's too kind of similar. You go down the same path with the, the facial expressions, but robust can be so many things. And um, I saw something in my head, so I'm not going to take it away. So if I have an idea, <laughs> if I didn't have an idea, I'd be all for getting rid of it. So Matt, let's commit it to the chat. It is a robust okay. voodoo. Ooh, I don't know, voodoo character. Nice right there. All right. Oh, well, this, this, this yeah, old guy. This is, that guy this is, is not a robust voodoo. Okay. This he's is coming up on four and a half years old. What is yeah. it? Is it actually a pumpkin? It's a kaboka squash. It's like a, a mini, you know, mini. Looks like a mini pumpkin. It's a little green. You and can find them in your grocery like store. Is it like formaldehyde or something? Yeah. It's, well, yeah, pickled. It's pickled. So it's like <laughs> a little bit of vinegar and water. Yeah. Lasts nice. forever. So someday you can eat it and it will be amazing. Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't even like I don't even like looking at it anymore. It just kind of wants to fall apart. There's not much solid left in it, so don't oh, sneeze. Nice. So but yeah, lots, there you go. lots of fans chiming in. This is kind of cool. I like yeah, that. hey everybody. Thanks for joining us. I yeah. some my back. friends were I saw some of my friends' names flash up for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this one. This one has a bad word in it, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey. That's our friend from LA, Matt. <laughs> of course. There oh, we go. It's Cara. Guys. Yeah. And I think you got in early on we had uh we had a couple more. I think there was uh yeah. Nico, yes. And then um 
Yeah. And Juvian, yeah. And there's others. There's certain Those roll are both in. super I talented them. ceramic artists also. Oh, I love it. I love it. Fantastic. Well, okay. if you're so, carving along with us, we're going to give you a couple of minutes to get your tools together and your squash or clay, or if you're painting or drawing, you know, everybody does something different, but everybody is welcome to join in on the challenge if you'd like. So what we're going to do right now is going to go around the horn and we're going to see what we're drinking for our carving oil. By carving oil, you know, we do a lot of, you know, we're not as young as we used to be. So we got to loosen up with a beverage to uh, really get the wheels of an imagination flowing. So Maddie, what are you drinking tonight for your... Well, I'm trying to stay close to Tucson, so I got actually a local Tucson beer called Moto Sonora, and the name of this beer is Victory or Death, so, you know, we'll call it, it's an IPA, so I don't know if I'm going to like it, but because I usually don't, but oh, you so I've, got a, I've got a backup just in case, but we'll see. Rolling the dice. How about you, Paul? So I'm going to go back to The Well, which is my one of my favorite breweries from Waltham, Massachusetts, and that's Mighty Squirrel. And this one is called Gorgeous Pumpkin. Nice. Oh, look yep. at that. They make and really, gorgeous. really good beer. It's a 6.1. And um, what do you say, Matt? It's 16 FLOZs. <laughs> all, all those numbers. and uh, it's, it So much science. Too so much like. science. Just a beer. It's a delicious beer. Christina, what do you got? I got classic Spindrift. Spindrift. My kids mm. drink it. Heck, heck out of that stuff. It's uh, yeah, it's we have a fridge of it in the in the garage. Yes, it's I don't know. It's my favorite. It's like seltzer, but with a little bit of extra. A little tiny flavor. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Little kick. Is the lime your favorite one? No, there's a new one that you can only get at Target that's like lime and mint, like mojito kind of. Oh, Ooh. hey now. Very nice. They Very told nice. they told me I could I could promote, so I'm gonna drink it out of one of my expensive Look mugs. At that. I love it. Big fan, big fan. Now, if you were pouring rum, I'd be a little worried. That would be a big. <laughs> That's a lot of rum. Yeah. Well, Cheers. it was nice joining you. That was a great time. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers to uh, another episode, and mm. God willing, a good carve. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, a, a, a robust voodoo. That's all. That's all I know. Yeah, you know what though? I think I'm gonna roll with this guy. I'm go. He's yeah, of a yeah. pumpkin. I mean, this kind of counts as a pumpkin. It's a Hubbard. So yeah, we're gonna see where this one goes. I like it. It looks kind of robust. Yeah. So uh, why don't we start diving into it? Let's start at the beginning, Christina. What? Look, sort of what nice. got you? Look at that. It's from, oh, look at that. It's almost it like she. Bad. It's like she went in and pulled it out. One out. That's right. Right out of the photo on the other side. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, I love it. So what led you to become an artist? Oh, okay. So here I was in, I was in college and I was writing a paper <clears throat> and I had been in college for two years and I would written so many papers and I was, oh, look. <laughs> I, I, Thanks, I, just thought, I, I, I do I have interrupt the story. Oh. That, is, that is so, that is so appropriate. That is amazing. Sorry. Um, I, uh, I was hating writing this paper with all of my soul and all I wanted to do was go be in one of the art classes I had to do. And for some reason that it, did not occur to me before that point. Um, anybody who's friends with me, it was a Jonathan Rose class. Um, and I was writing this paper and I just de so desperately didn't want to do it. And I was like, what if all of my classes could be art classes? And then it clicked, like there's colleges for that. There's like places you can go where that's what it is. And, and so I uh, transferred to art school. And, got and what, what year were you at this point? I had done two years of college and, and so I was late to, no, maybe just one year. I can't even remember, but I did two years of, co of regular college and then tr transferred. Okay. Um, and so you had to start back at the beginning, I'm assuming, obviously, right? It took me five to... years. So okay. I, I was able to transfer enough for one year's worth. But you know, in art school, it's that you have so many prereqs that are art based. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, if I went in for jewelry. I was going to be a jeweler. And I had a teacher that was a ceramicist who was so great. And I really loved him. And I it sort of switched me to doing ceramics. But then he went on sabbatical my senior year. So I didn't get to do any of my good classes with him. Oh, bummer. Oh, bummer. Which was a pretty big bummer. But um, yeah, so started doing clay in art school. So cool. I mean, obviously, from seeing some of the sculptures we'll see in a bit, I mean, it, 
it's so obvious that you're classically trained. Like everything is perfect. Oh no, see that's a joke. I I went. To, <laughs> I should not diss my alma mater, but I went to Tyler School of Art in Philadelphia, and they were very very not classical. It was very about express yourself, throw paint oh. at a wall. Like it was very not technical. And I was I found that really frustrating. Like I wanted, I'm like, I can express myself on my own time. You should teach me how to do things. Um, mm. So I had a lot of uh, frustration with that. I wish I'd gone to a more classical art school, but whatever. This one was cheap and close. So, well, I'll tell you what, it doesn't look like you didn't. <laughs> it really does. Everything's very classical. I, I know we were talking about earlier, we were talking about wrinkles. Right. And I, I've seen in a couple of your posts when you talk about how much you love putting the, the creases in denim and things like that. Yeah. It's uh, it's yeah, almost like therapeutic. Is, yeah, it's my happy place. I can tell you guys feel that way, too. Like those last little like the sweet, the, oh. you know, the depth of the eye and the like those, the, the little the like crease in that little point in the corner of a mouth, like really getting oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. Once the, once you get it right, that's perfect. Yeah. It's, yeah, they, they, for me, like that one corner of the mouth when they're smiling and, and it kind of goes up and down. Anyway, little things yeah. like that. And like, Ooh, I, don't get I know, it. and you don't get to do those things until the end. Like you can yes. sort of stuff them in, but you have to like go through all the big stuff until you can like do those yeah. sweet little details at the end. And right. it, it shows in your carving that you, you do that too. That's the point when you actually start going, I enjoy this. Yeah, <laughs> but you get past the main blocking part where you're like, "This is totally. taking so long." Right. Yeah. By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I had to abandon the Hubbard squash instantly. Oh, yeah, why? Okay. Calcified. The outside, oh. the skin on them gets. It's almost like a. I don't even know you call it like a hard plaster under the skin if it if there's too much calcium. Oh. And I just thought because it was so early in the season that I'd be getting a fresh one. This thing's probably oh. like eight years old, been sitting in a warehouse yeah. and just rolled it out the door. It's probably pickled. Yeah. They pulled it yeah. out of the pickle. It's hollow. Like I could probably play it like an instrument or something. It's just seeds. If I wish yeah. I, I would pickle it. When it comes to your ceramics, I mean, obviously you've done you've done amazing, like very detailed stuff. And, and again, so I, I'm such I've I've thrown a couple little things on a wheel, and I'm so enamored by that whole process and like the just the beautiful feel of of, of a wheel. Of, of clay on the wheel and just getting the symmetry right and but then you go is this like in this piece is from before is this like a stamped thing or you carved it in there or how, how is that yeah they're carved i should show you one of my my molds um i have so i do them in in uh plaster or you probably can't see it too well there but like this is like a little pendant thing kind of like what i'm wearing okay. here Oh, yeah, yeah. And, oh, beautiful. and so I'll take a block of plaster and I like carve it in reverse onto the mm. plaster and then I can press clay onto that. And then like with things like this, then I, I let it go leather hard and then I build with the pieces after oh. I've pressed them on here. So okay. those aren't done on the wheel. Like this one, I, I like the base is thrown on the wheel and then these are all pressed slabs and I kind of, I see. It all. okay. You know, a little of everything. You know, like you do, Matt. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, of course. Uh, here we go. Uh, Nicole <laughs> says, Christina doesn't need a wheel. Come <laughs> you know, Nico, can't... I love my wheel. I use my wheel all the time. It's right there. Yeah. It's, it's what I grew up on. I spent two decades throwing, and I, but then I got a little tired of it and moved on to hand building, and then I'm now I'm sculpting. Yeah. The hand building stuff, because I think, and I'll get back to another picture here, but um, when, when you, when we saw some of like the hello, wrong, wrong button, let's get <laughs> this, back to this one. So, so, I mean, like a handle would be hand built, uh, but then some of the stuff behind you, and in, in this case, obviously the sculpted, um, lizard or gecko, I guess in this case, gecko lizard, I guess, I guess it's the same family, but I mean, um, so is that, is that what you're talking about with hand? That's the hand built. Piece. Yeah. Yeah. So anything that's not on the wheel or like slip cast, um, okay. there's a lot of things you can do that are different technical things, but anything you just kind of like construct with your hands, um, like you can yeah. extrude stuff, but then you like do stuff with it. And so that's the hand. Right. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Now, those are, so that's a glaze. Am I saying that right? Do you have to glaze those? Then? <laughs> then those are glazed. Yeah, those have under glaze colors on them and then a clear glaze on top. 
See, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, now, yeah. it's not the, it's not the same color. color when you start, though, is it? I, I, I know. I, no, I that's I a good it. point, too. Underglaze is, but regular glaze is often a very different color. I'm all, I feel like I'm, I'm getting there. Like I could just get a, I could get a wheel tomorrow and start and completely yes. make a mess of I'm everything. sure you'd be amazing. <laughs> it's, oh, it's yeah. It's just I'd that be... easy. It's just yes. that easy. Like just 20 years later, Paul, we'll have, we'll have cool stuff like See, this. I mean, I can carve a pumpkin, right? Like that's, <laughs> isn't that one of the prerequisites? No? <laughs> I mean, we don't do that in my ceramic class, but maybe we should. Yeah, nah, you, you, you're way, way above carving pumpkins. See now, the, so this is an ornament, am I right? Yeah. So this now is a local, a local castle, because we've got those where I live, hmm. um, Glen Cairn Museum, and uh, this is I'm, I like this because the the right hand door handle to this is shiny because people always use the right hand door. Uh -huh. So on my ornaments, I polish the right hand side, not the left hand side. To match oh. I didn't actually pick up on that. that. That's great. The door. I love that. Now and so that's glazed to look like. Like a that's not a glaze. Oh. That's actually a rub and buff, which oh, is a, uh, a rub on finish that you can, like a wax that you kind of burnish on to clay. Oh. So it's not something you could use on a, a food vessel because it's not food safe, but uh, it works fine for sculpture and stuff. Yeah. And it gives it that metallic look. Yeah. yeah. So you should rub and buff one of your pumpkins some one day and you could have a metallic. That'd be so sweet. I'd do a tin man. <laughs> It, it lasts yeah. for about thirty seconds. And then I take around. two pictures, and it would all just be like peel, like sliding off the surface. Of the <laughs> Let me okay. All you need is the photo. Yeah, that's it. That's that's kind of all we care about, honestly. See, I love this. This is beautiful. Yeah. This is just like beautiful because of the, the glaze. Like you said, you don't know what you're going to get till you get it. So I'm assuming this mm -hmm. is just a, a, a test and some like playing with it, and then I'm assuming everyone is very unique, right? Yeah, I've got, I mean, really, I'm almost 30 years into playing with glazes and it's still like, you never know. I mean, you wow. know, but like you're, it, whatever, it's, it's a never ending battle. Uh, no, challenge, adventure. Nothing. It's a never ending adventure. Thank you. That's a good way to put it. Combine glazes and see what you get and fail. There's so much failing, so much failing. <laughs> Sounds like us. Yeah, I'll you, we're, we're pretty good at that. Do it again. Yeah, we'll do it again. Yeah, yeah. The, the technical um, capability you have, like when it comes to something this, I mean, I'm yeah. assuming this is this is uh, not only the handmade pieces and and the throwing pieces all put together and assembled, but when it comes to the the glazing, it's it's another level. It's like um, to, to get it that perfect. I'm assuming that's just the, the, the 20 years of 20 years plus of doing this. I'm assuming it, it yeah, well, those are pretty old. You're showing a bunch of old stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely, I have just, I mean, you, you throw a lot of it out, but I have a, just a whole lot of stupid looking pottery. <laughs> well, I think that's great. That's, that's kind of the, I mean, maybe it's because I'm from the Northeast, you know, we, we leaf peep. So stuff, stuff like this is near and dear. I think it's amazing. I couldn't even imagine how you would, well, these ones worked out, but they're a product of like, you know, many tries that didn't. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Totally and then your jewelry. I mean, like the pendant you have on um, is, is one of these, I'm assuming, right? Just like Yeah, that. it's just like that. Yep. Okay. That's yeah, I'm long. actually working on launch. Oh, yeah, there's one. That might actually be the one. That one's on oh, that picture. That. I'm, I'm working on launching a jewelry business by the in maybe next year. So I've been spending a whole lot of time this year making, my goal is to have 50 new designs all carved and ready to go and then wow. start launching them. I'm, I'm about 25 in right now. Wow. So are you, are you a sketcher? Do, like, do you get all your ideas down on paper before you? I used to be, now I use Procreate. Ah, Procreate's great. I love and, it. Uh, I yeah, because you can see a lot of my designs are very geometric. Mm -hmm. um so it works really well to be able to you know work in mirror or, or yeah. um, like radial symmetry and all of that um for some of my designs so i've, I've been really loving it so yeah. speaking of speaking of jewelry when it comes to like the amount of pieces you want to do and, and to, is it to put into like a show i mean how do you exposition them how do you how do you um kind of get them all out there you right <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah. We will see. I haven't really, uh, I mean, I've spent 25 years selling pottery and stuff. So I have 
some experience with doing like shows and craft out shows and like um whatever stuff like that yeah. i've never done anything like etsy and mm -hmm. i'm not even a little bit interested in that so oh, really? i've been talking yeah that just sounds like that's a whole other job like yeah. you know like paul yeah. was talking about earlier about just having to produce extra thing not earlier anyway um i i don't have the time to do that so i to like photograph every piece like six times and post it and then mail each one individually that's a whole other job so and i want to keep sculpting so yeah. i i'm thinking of i've been in talks with like um galleries like little um craft stores and um cool. anyway i my i'm hoping i could do a thing where i sell like not wholesale but like to to places to sell for me almost like wow. high-end boutiques and stuff like that where... yeah we'll see yeah, yeah. And I've had some interest, so I mean, I haven't actually got there yet to producing. We, it's all going to be. I'm, um, I'm open to what will happen and learning and all of that. The universe yeah. will take care of it for you. Yeah, laying the groundwork right now and see where it leads. Well, I, love I wish you, I wish you the best of luck, and I have uh, no doubt that it will be successful. Well, it, it, once we see some of the other pieces she does, if you can just own a piece that she's touched, this right? Is probably, you know, I mean, this is like ah, advanced to touch this. I want it. Yeah, that's that's probably gonna be the uh, I mean, you know, not that, people are looking at the things you're showing right now and they're like, why is I she know, on but this wait, I'm, I'm sorry, we, 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 we did a slow oh. roll because we are such huge fans of your sculpture too. And we just want to make sure people kind of saw what you grounded, how you got started, because I think that's always fun. Um, it, but the show is called Carvers and Creators. It's and, not called Carvers and One Thing, you know. I we, bet you've never had a ceramic jeweler on before. Ceramic jeweler? Look up ceramic, uh, Jewelry maker. Uh, yeah, I think we've had ceramic. We've had ceramic uh, guests before. But not a jeweler. I think we've had the big, the big Duluth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the cops, and then we had uh, Mike Effects on, who makes Mikey Effects, Mike Regan. Yeah, we've had a bunch. Just, hey, man, don't pigeonhole us, Christina. We have everybody I, I, on. It. I love, I love that you. You have fabulous <laughs> like, artists on. I am not criticizing. I'm just saying that this is like doesn't. <laughs> quite fit the vibe of the show so far but that's fine. well you know what though i mean like the the paul had a good point so these what we love and we geek out on is like the creative cool. process and, and how you got your start how you get you know what keeps you motivated like your tools there's a million stuff million things that are like really really cool to us even though it's not the same medium clearly we're, we're using a really silly medium um you know very very happy very seasonal medium but at the same time it's like the uh it's um it's just really fascinating to hear like other stuff that like was literally sticks around like you know that jewelry and some of your pottery and, uh, and clearly your um, your sculptures will be here, be here for a lot longer than we will so uh, and that's the, that's the tough one for us to understand but really cool to hear that process <laughs> just think in in 30 or 40 years on antiques roadshow somebody's going to roll in with one of your pieces and they're going to be <laughs> like are you kidding me these one of these hasn't been seen in years this thing's worth that woman's dollars. been dead for three decades. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> she died at the hands of the wheel. Yeah, that she was <laughs> making that right <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, now, this See, is now a we now we'll get into a little more of a tie in as to some of the other things that you do that yeah. would translate into the sculpture that we are used to seeing, you know. Yeah, so it just maybe take a take us a minute. I mean, because I, I kind of have an understanding of having really perused all of your, your stuff for, for a long time. But seeing like give us this idea of scale. Because these are I've seen them in the oh. kiln at each Oh, I could show kiln. you one of them. Oh, like a shoe them. box, I'm thinking, right? Oh, yeah. oh boy, it sounds heavy. It's not well they're heavy yet. So this is that oh really. Oh boy. The the little it's not it's uh I have never put a finish on them, so someday I have yeah. to okay but so this is the scale of that one oh i mean they're God. bigger when you make them they shrink when you sure. fire them but not that much anyway so you have to you mold these right i sculpt them but these are one one of a kind so there's no yeah there's they're no... one of a kind they okay, haven't that's... been cast or anything yeah okay so that's what i was wondering when you said when you said they but you're literally talking about these three yes that's oh, okay of, that's wow the guy okay. In the front. they're, they're bigger than i thought they're, they're slightly larger so when you talk about shrinking, because I know these have to be hollowed out, and we're going to talk a lot about that because that's crazy to me. But when you talk about them shrinking down, what what percent? At least ten percent smaller? 
Uh, depends how high you fire them. They they shrink about five percent from when you sculpt them to when they're dry, and then a little bit more the first time you fire them. But then if you high fire them, they shrink another five percent. So it can oh, wow. be between ten and thirteen or fourteen percent, uh, wow. depending on That's how much you fire them. Yes, which huh. is advantageous in things like jewelry where you want to get the detail, but annoying in things like sculpture when you're trying to have like a life size person and it yeah. becomes not life size. Well, yeah, you gotta <clears throat> gotta blow them up a little. That's Does that factor in two things when you're when you're creating uh, a piece to make it a little no, bit more? No, not yet. No, because I, I I haven't made life size except until my most recent one, um, and she just is life size, so she'll be a little bit smaller when she's fired, but. Wow. Um, I haven't ever tried to make one that would end up being life size. It's not a priority for me, but um, but if I was, I would do it bigger. Yeah. So the the children on these animals, like, to, to give us give us kind of your thought behind. It. I just I love the idea. I just don't. I'd love to hear the story. Like, what's your? Because they're all look. They look like they're dreaming. They're they're kind of in like you know they're blissful in some way or another. That like they're sleeping in some cases. What what um give give us your inspiration for this. So the, the feeling that I have about them is that they've been on an adventure. It's like a children's story kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you, the one girl has her arm in a sling, so she's a little beat up. And they, oh. you know, um, they have stuff like the guy's got a ukulele on his back. And there's just sort of a vibe of they've been traveling. But uh, and then these animals are bringing my in my mind that they're bringing them home after the adventure. And they've sort of succeeded in whatever they were trying to do, but they're not back to home in reality yet. And so they're traveling home and it's like nighttime and they're looking up at the stars or the northern lights oh, or something on their way home. It's sort of the feeling that I have about them, but there's not a specific story or anything okay. that they're from. The interpretation. I just, I love it. I, th I think all of them just look so, and the animals are sculpted beautifully, the textures. Anyway, it's Thanks. just tremendous. Do, do you it. ever... Because and this is maybe a dumb question because I I saw the like, finished piece. Do you ever want to paint them or do you ever want to do any type yeah. of? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I'm really just putting that off. <laughs> I, just, okay. I uh, I haven't finished anything yet. Um, so I I can't really speak to that. I I want to. I okay. have intention to finish them. I don't like their chalky white when they've been fired and they need to be something different than that. Okay. So I've been doing some research, watching videos about how artists use, you know, graphite powder and waxes and paints and things. And I mm -hmm. have good intentions. Okay. Well, you know, <laughs> there's time, thankfully. So they're good. I, right. I they're not stay, going anywhere. They're as not long like, as I stay alive. We're good. Plenty of time. Oh, I love this. Yeah. So good. So close her up. Yeah. Yeah. So I sculpted them not on the rhinoceros and then. Yeah, they're just on a block okay. of clay there, and then I moved them over. And then, so I know what it, it probably doesn't take you a, an exorbitant amount of time when it comes to a piece of jewelry, but what, what do you, what time do you put into something like like these two figures? I don't know. Um, because you come you you come and go from it, I imagine, right? You, oh yeah, I never do it all at once. It those okay. might be like ten hours of work. That's a good, that's, see, that's the thing some people don't understand when it comes to buying artwork like that, especially a one-off piece, is the the hours that you've invested into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like my large sculpture. Price tag on that. Crazy, crazy oh, amount of number of hours. I can only imagine. <clears throat> what's, a day, what's a day in the life like? I mean, do you, you know, we're going to start talking about some of your larger life ones, but what, what's a day in the life for you when it comes to coffee in the morning and you're and you're just out in the workshop you know you're doing your thing until middle of the night or you know you, know you have a family and your other things on the on the agenda but what's what's the number of hours you spend in the, in the workshop not much not, not much no i'm i'm not at all full time at this i uh oh, i i'll try and sum up so during covid i got really depressed and i stopped working and then uh, was was unable to get in my studio, and it was yeah, a sort of a spiral of like you know feeling worse and worse because I couldn't get to work. Yeah. And like a year in, I just was like I gotta something's gotta change, and I I committed to doing ten minutes a day in my studio, no matter what, every day. Okay. 
Okay. And it could be just sweeping the floor or, you know, watching some things, but I had to be in my studio for 10 minutes a day. And that le led me to, you know, once you're in the studio, you can like yeah. go. Get the juices so some, going. Yeah. Some days I would just sweep the floor for 10 minutes, but um, that got me moving again. And that's when I started sculpting. And uh, so some days it would be hours and hours, but usually it's not more than probably two hours okay um some days it'll be more but mo usually it's between half an hour and two hours a day and okay. if when i'm in a cycle of producing something for you know if i if i have an order or whatever uh i can do long hours but when i'm for my sculpture i don't ever do huge amounts i it, it's mentally exhausting and yeah i just do it in little bits and then I'm still beating myself up about it badly, you know, like, well, ah, I got to do more. And, and I'm, that's, that's a struggle. So. It, it's also tough to force the creative process, yeah. right? You know, you, you have to be in the certain mind frame. I mean, everybody can push through if you have a deadline or something like that. But if, if you're doing it to just because you have a goal in sight, you can always move the goalposts too, right? Like yeah. you'll finish it when you finish it. If there is no time frame, I mean, but that's also that's also where that little voice comes in and says, "Get in there for t at least ten minutes." You know, start yeah. baby steps. It's like going back to the gym. You know, start yes. slow. Yeah, yeah, it's been mm -hmm. great. I mean, I've it's 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 worked, but I I need to keep I need a new challenge. I don't know. I've been thinking about setting a new challenge for myself of you, you know hours rather than minutes. I think pumpkin carving is a better challenge. Instead yeah, of clearly. thinking about hours and minutes, I think you should just sit down with a pumpkin and. and, and <laughs> I do not need to be distracted by more creative endeavors. I, oh, I, I could see. You have enough on your world. plate. You have enough on your plate. We have a I question do. for you. Um, here we go. Do you, by Brittany, do you put glaze or finish on the large sculptures or do they stay bisque? And right now, I think we kind of answered that question a little bit, right? About the potential. Yeah. Paint. Oh, I have thing. intentions. I will finish them. I have visuals in my mind about how I want them to be, but uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say what that is because I may not achieve it. Currently, <laughs> they're just bisked. I ha I don't have anything with a finish on it. So, but I have some bisked there, things. There is something to be said because because Paul and I work in a one color world when it comes to pumpkins. So we're so lighting um, and shadows and creating depth you know using wrinkles and stuff like that and and the form is, yeah. is kind of all we have too so i i think there's something so beautiful to to seeing a, a single color to me I mean, again yes, I know when you I fire it when you fire it like you said it gets it's whiter and it's chalkier it's, you yes. probably lose, it gets a little bit more dull but um yeah. i i love the you know again i spend way too much time going through all your your stuff um on instagram for instance but looking at this and i can see almost a, a shine of the skin and the Yes, that's what, shoot. and that's what I want to achieve. I'm definitely not going to paint them like people. They're no. they're going to stay one color, but uh, or you know, mostly one color with some highlighting. Um, yeah, oh, beautiful. But uh, yeah, they become very dull, and when they're this was taken <clears throat> when it was still wet, so it does have that beautiful skin sheen. And I just mm -hmm. have to. I know there's ways to do that with waxes and things, and and I will learn. I'm I'm young at this. Yeah. So yeah. in terms of glazes, um, this is probably going to be the stupidest question. So don't type in an LOL at me or whatever, but yeah. there isn't like a, a, a high gloss glaze, a semi-gloss and an eggshell glaze. <laughs> there are those things, but they okay. are called gloss and, and matte and um, satin and but Same thing. they, they, Yes, that is a thing in glazes. I will not glaze these. I'm not even a little bit interested in that risk. <laughs> There's too much unknown in glazes. I'm going to put a cold finish on them. Um, okay. I, I'm not. Uh, some people glaze their sculptures and good on you. But the number of hours I put on the right. and the chancing yeah. of it looking terrible with a glaze is I'm not interested. And there's no reason you don't need to glaze. Uh, it's it doesn't need to be food safe or anything. So yeah. Right. And, 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 the, and the point you made about like, um, thanks yeah. Brittany. Oh, there we go. That's nice. Yeah. I, I tend to agree. And then we had, we had this question also. Um, and I think we got the answer, but when it comes yeah. to, <clears throat> when it comes to you, um, you know, 
kind of from an inspiration of of because I see we're we're staring at this one here for a few minutes, but uh, and we've got certainly more to cover. But um, when it comes to your your subject matter and and how you pick what you pick, um, and I, there's a number of really cool ones. People just the, idly staring at their phones and stuff like that. Did that was that born out of of uh, um, of COVID and that whole nonsense of just being alone and being you know, just, just, or was it before that, or maybe born no, out of was, jobs? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stupid iPhones. It was it was born out of um, my middle kid was looking at his phone. Um, he's very bendy, like he's extremely uh, flexible, and so the first one I did was of him sitting on the floor looking at his phone because he looked so great i was like oh i want to get that slump like i have to capture that uh-huh. slump yeah. and so i did that just to see if i could sculpt i was like we'll sculpt this um and it turned out i was like hey looks like i can sculpt so uh <laughs> i i stuck with that i like the theme a lot it's it's my commentary on um Oh, so, the whole can I tell you my commentary? The, the reason behind them is uh, so I posted that one of my son, and I got just tons of adults saying, "Ain't that just the way?" Kids today, uh, always mm-hmm. on their phones, and like, and there was a lot of nice comments about like nice sculpt and all that, but there was just so much like gentle vitriol about kids today and they were all adults on their phones typing this in like i'm like this this is all of us like we we're all addicted to our phones and and it's not all bad like it's how we connect it's how we share it's how we learn it's how we entertain ourselves and it's so freaking addictive and yeah so it's all of the things and it's all the people and i use teens because it's like it brings that up for people like it brings up that ability to be judgy but mm. but without the like hold up but you're looking at this on your phone i would bet so much money yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So, you should be working right now but you're staring at my stuff i know and you know it's, i stare at my stuff i like that i, <laughs> I think that's no, fine I, but like um, yeah yeah well that's I, sort of like my, my commentary yeah, I, I love it because I, I constantly, I've got three daughters and I, I know you've got three sons and I know that there's probably a lot of times where you're like, okay, put down, the, you know, but then I'm finding myself, my, my girls have said to me a number of times, like, dad, 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 I'm talking to you. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have to yes, do the same thing. We do All it right, too. Guilty. guilty. Damn it. Uh, it's real. <laughs> yeah. The struggle is real. The struggle mm-hmm. is real. And I think what... Paul and I just are just completely blown away. As are hundreds of thousands of other people who, who have um, watched your your reels and videos and everything on Instagram and other places. When it comes to your final piece, your, your finished sculpture, you hollow it out. You, so in, in, in order to do that, you have to cut it apart. So yeah. it's just crazy. I'm sure it, it it defies logic, and everyone's like, "That beautiful piece, don't cut the arm off now." Oh, you did, and then you have to. Reassemble and I and I think we, I heard you say related to going and firing it again. You're like, not on my dead body. Am I going to chance this piece again in a, in another kiln and like the? Well, there is no real risk in the second firing. It it only explodes oh, okay. in the first firing. The, the explosion, if it's going to happen, and they do oh not God. just break, they will explode. Um, wow would happen in the first firing and the second one would just be if i put glaze on it the glaze might come out stupid and then there's nothing you can do about it so okay. that's the reason i wouldn't bother doing a glaze fire but um yes the, the reason you hollow them is that they do not blow up okay so so is there a certain thickness yeah. that you have to achieve yeah 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 um you can fire things that are pretty thick you just have to fire really slowly and they have to be like really dry which so you dry them for like months and and then you preheat the kiln for like a day um wow. so you can make things that are thick uh, my rule of thumb is uh, an inch um and that okay. that you can do in a reasonable kind of firing you don't have to fire like over days and days and days so i make try make the walls an inch no thicker than an inch and i try and make them a little thicker at the bottom for support and a little lighter at the top um just so that it doesn't make the thing slump and that's wow. the goal so what do you do with things like legs and arms right because that's 
obviously more no, than an down inch. Down the middle, right? You have to yeah. come down. You the cut them. Top. They're all oh, hollow. Geez. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! Sounds yeah. Ugh. So, yeah. You just ugh. like this one. I flipped upside down. So like, so the bottom of her legs, they're you know, are, are open. Yeah. Um, but sometimes. Uh, you just like I just cut their heads off, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And oh, it's, it's hard to watch because it's just I, I look at these; it's so beautiful, and and then to see you do that, but then it, clearly it it all ends up okay at the end, which is wonderful. Yes, trust the process. Um, trust the process. Here's a good question. Until it, until it, I sculpt with a still a cone six stoneware called stand standard one eighty two. It's like a white with some grog and um. I don't fire to cone six though. As I was saying, I just, I do a high bisque, like maybe cone 03 and leave it at that. But I like that stone where I, I spent all of my years doing pottery was with standard 181, which is a very similar clay without grog. So I was like, well, this will play well. I like, I just picked a similar clay to sculpt with. Okay. Um, so it's just a stoneware. So yeah. Uh, sorry, Paul, go ahead. No, uh, just to go me. back. So you, you didn't know you could sculpt human anatomy until you watched your son on the floor with an iPhone and then you banged out these sculptures. Is that real? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did do I did do a sculpting class. I did a oh. one week sculpting class with a oh. man named um, Philippe Ferro, who's very oh. I know Philippe Ferro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, actually, yeah. I, I I was signed up for his class in Vermont oh. when right COVID. COVID. Yeah. So oh. I could have been doing this. You tell me I could have been doing this with one week class. Oh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, Actually, you're very talented. You probably would pick it up easily. No, nope, um, I took a class at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston a couple of years ago just to, for anatomy. And the guy said, I overthink everything. And I told him he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then you punched him. No, yeah. it's, uh, so I did take that class and it was um, like, oh, I, I loved it. And it was surprisingly easy. I did go to arts. I have a degree in yeah, ceramics, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I never did any sculpting in college. So I hadn't really done like a, a figure, a human form until I took that class with That's Philippe. Crazy. And then it, and then I didn't sculpt again for a couple of years. It just wasn't, I didn't have space for it in my life, but I loved it very much. And then, so when COVID hit, I was like, oh, I should try it again. And um, yeah. Well, yeah. you really went all in because it's amazing. I mean, right down to stuff like drapery, which I know, boggles like amazing world world mm -hmm. renowned artists they have the toughest time with things like hair and, and like i said drapery and and that that's your bread and butter it seems like that's where you really yeah. enjoy it yeah i like the the slump of a body and then the, the flow of clothing is yeah. my favorite and oh. that's two different things that are both equally as difficult so to just get the pose correctly anatomically is one challenge right to make it believable to the human eye really right that it's mm -hmm in that pose and then to clothe it with clay yeah. but then you know again you're tricking the human eye into believing that this is a, a real like if you were to doctor the lighting in this you would think it was a girl on the floor if you put a light in in the front of that iphone hitting that face you know you would take a double oh, I should do that. you think it That'd was a, cool. an actual child i mm -hmm. should try that but yeah a little, yeah a little kind of glue on led or something yeah i Shame i'll do it. that I like that idea. When I there when I go. finally put a finish on it, and I'll be like, Paul Dever told me to do this. <laughs> nice. I'll get credit. Holy, holy oh. moly! I love it. Yeah, but the, the the patterning on the on the pants and the I mean, yeah. The, so, so imagine, imagine Paul if she had gone for two weeks to to his class. I mean, oh, forget it. Forget it. Everybody <laughs> everybody would quit sculpting. <laughs> they couldn't keep up. Yeah. And how the hair yeah. lies and how the fabric lies and how the skin up. Uh, it's just wow, just, Philippe must be one hell of a teacher too, then. Yeah. <laughs> Holy right. God. Everybody you know, who like, takes his class can do this. Oh man, I missed out. Oh, yeah, by... so that's that's a picture of my son. That... There we go. Yeah, that's such a it's you're and, not, and, you're and, not, and, it's so true to life too. <laughs> like with the, the this whole series with the phones and just kind of laying around. Yeah, so it's interesting working with my models. Um, so I, I work from photos of models. So I, I'll, I'll hire somebody, um, they're all people that I know, but, um, and I'll be like trying to get them to do the pose. And it's hard to get people to be really 
really truly relaxed you know like you, you people don't get into that pose without sitting that way for an hour like you, yeah. you tend yeah. to uh, it's really a challenge and and multiple times most times i have to go back and reshoot like i'll take the pictures and i'll come home and i'll be like nope they're too stiff it's not right yeah. then right. i go back and i'll be like you gotta be slumpier like you just gotta lean into it harder and and then oh, eventually we get the photos <laughs> And, and you're you're right about the kids being uber flexible. I I I used to I remember come downstairs and I and my girls would be sitting on their legs on a hard wooden thing, like and I'm, I'm just like oh my god my knees would just pop out of my legs. I know I know. Like, That's good stuff. And, and, and they're like oh yeah there's nothing bad you know they're so flexible <laughs> jealous. Yeah. I love it. And then we have this one, which is one of your newer ones or more recent. I think yes, more this one I'm posts. currently working on. Yeah. Now, if any, if any of you, well, if you haven't followed Christina, you should be, and go directly to the video of her doing the hair. Oh my God, it's amazing. And then don't watch the next video where the whole thing falls over. No, but like <laughs> any good movie, there has to be drama. <laughs> it's like drama. watching a movie that's being created. It's it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, that's like the she's nearly back oh. together. For anybody who has been following oh, the saga, okay. She, okay. the saga. Yeah. Uh, oh. She fell over, and I had to scrap most of it, but I, I severed her head, <laughs> and I saved her head, <laughs> and I rebuilt do. all the arms and everything. And um, did you talk to her about doing? All you, did you tell her you're sorry as you're doing? You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't want to do this. It's not. I didn't really personify my sculptures that much, but um, <laughs> I know I would. Oh yeah. God. No, she's 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 nearly there, but I had to like handle that the head a lot to to take it off and put it back on and and all that. So a lot of the hair has been damaged, but that's the next step is to get back in there and fix it all. Do you, okay, this one has this, been a saga. This this would be a dumb <laughs> question because I think I know the answer, but so I'll just give you myself as perspective. When I start carving something and I get to a little spot, I get almost like this wash of like adrenaline or something comes over to me because I'm like, oh yes, it's like. I can see it. It was like in my head and now I see it kind of coming to fruition. Do you, when you're doing like redoing the hair, mm. um, especially on something where it's a head where you, you had it and then you had to redo it. Do you get that same kind of flush of like, mm -hmm. yeah. You finally got no, it. Right? Not at all. Not even a little bit. Not yet. Really? I, oh, I hate okay. it. I, I it's been very painful. Just because it's like <laughs> I already did this every time. I'm like, I already made oh. this arm. I already did this wrinkle. I I am not enjoying it, and I am very committed to this piece. It means a lot to me, and yeah. I want to get it right. Um, but I am not. I do not have the same energy as I did the first time. I have the same commitment. I have more commitment, but less yeah. uh, of the excitement that I had the okay. first time through. Do you watch the clock every five minutes and wonder why only five minutes has passed when you do it? No, I, I don't feel that way about it. I do feel just like oh, uh, it's 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 harder to get started on the day, but. Yeah, I'm getting there. It's beautiful. It's just absolutely stunning. And then the uh, the expression on the face and the you know just the you know, the, the hoodie. I mean, just every every part of it is just it's great. Delightful. It does have a a, a feel of Philippe Ferro. It really it. it well, oh, I mean, no, I don't want that. Hush. Right. He's a, he's <laughs> I'm trying to have. He is amazing. I just he's, don't want to. I don't want to copy his vibe. I no. I'm trying no, to have no. my own. Philippe is Philippe. Yeah. Now Luffy. let me ask you a question because this is a weird one. The phone was it pressed almost like a Play-Doh thing from a cast of an iPhone? Or just it cut was out? Not. You no, sculpted I, that? I just, I just sculpted that. Hmm. Must be nice. Well, must be nice to just be able to do anything. Maybe you should sculpt an <laughs> iPhone out of a pumpkin. Yeah. Well, when they start growing them rectangular, you got it. I'm on it. <laughs> no, I believe in you. I think you could do it. You could do it, Paul. Come on. You could put like a hand, like make a hand and a phone just on the yeah. pumpkin. Challenge like accept. a creepy, make it like a creepy, like gnarled hand. Oh, put that on your wheel. It could be like gnarly hand iPhone, and then you could give it a motion. On this four-hour episode of Carvers and Creators, we'll be making a <laughs> hand from forty-eight pieces. Have, of you, have either of you ever carved a hand? Yeah, yeah. I actually did the Extendo hand from Were American Werewolf in London, mm. and 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 I had to do it strategically just because you there isn't enough depth. To, yeah. To, to the way hand goes. So yeah. I cut out the palm and the you know the first joint of the thumb, and then uh -huh. I just constructed each finger and each joint and and shaved them into place and mm, really worked. fabulous. You know you got to hide the seams with like the putty from when you scrape. 
Oh, and wow. Yeah, it was very fun. I'm, I'm assuming yeah, it's impressive. just as fun as how you feel about doing hair. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like doing hair. I just didn't want to do it the second time. I uh, yeah. I think that hands and eyes are the two hardest things to sculpt. My hands are so hard. Oh, my God. And the hands are just as expressive as any facial expression. If you can get the hand right, especially in like a creepy posture or something like that, mm -hmm. a pose, I, yeah. I, I look at the hands on sculptures more than more than the face sometimes. Yeah, yeah. hands are, are you, yeah. But, but if you make a mistake on a hand or an eye, it's like your your, your brain doesn't let you not see it. You know, you know what yes. I mean? Yes, you got to get it right. Be, has to be right. Or you put a mitten on it. <laughs> here's, yeah, here's you hollowing out um, the, uh, the looks like the leg. So are, are you doing it in sections or, or I, how do you, oh my in other God. words, have you ever carved or made something and then forgotten, oh, I never did the forearm or something like that? No. Like, oh. that <laughs> yeah, that would blow up hard. I, I tend to, uh, thanks, Laura. I tend to um, keep real good track of, of okay. everything that I've done, but I can't see whether or not I've done it. So I just have to remember. Okay. Okay. But there's not that many body parts, right? No, yeah, you make it. So, uh, it just, Matt, I'm pretty sure you and I would, it would be like they thought it was a natural gas explosion in our house. Because the house would be gone. Yeah, it wasn't oh, there's fault. two legs. Oh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't my fault. It was a, uh, yeah. But so, so this thing is so big, and like some of your other larger life size pieces. So, what size kiln do you use? Do you have to build right. one around it, or how does that work? I do not have a kiln big enough for these pieces. I oh have a, a kiln um, that I can use down in downtown Philadelphia. Yeah. I haven't done it yet, but they have given me permission to rent a cart kiln. I am okay. not even a little bit looking forward to transferring, like tr um, transporting them downtown like oh that. Gosh. Because they're very, very breakable when they're dry. Oh, yeah, they're leather. Is that, is that what you say, the leather for, by that point? Or are they dried at that uh, point? They would be bone dry when I bone dry. Okay. would take them down. Because they have to dry for months. I leave them out yeah. for a long time. But uh, I haven't done I'm just putting it off really hard. The 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 one that we first looked at of the girl um, in shorts and a tank top Yeah. Um, would be has to go to that kiln. And uh, I just haven't done it's it. Too big. Speaking yeah, of, there's uh, the part. There's the oh, center no. part that fell. Oh, I mean, I, oh, all right, oh. so it didn't fall like that. I cut it off and threw it on the ground. That's why yeah. it looks like that. Mm -hmm. but, oh, that was the angry. That was the angry photo. It wasn't angry so much as like Sad. despair. You want to sculpt that? <laughs> sculpt a pumpkin of what Christina looked like when she threw half her sculpture on the ground. That would be a pumpkin. <laughs> oh, oh that's a sad one. There's so many. There's so many beautiful ones though. So I, I, I'll, I'll I'll fast forward because I it certainly this. Won't. I mean, this one is my favorite that I pose is so cool and and it, it reminds me of like the way my my kids will sit like yeah. matt how you the saying like man when your hips used to be able to just kind of sit like that yeah, yeah for hours yeah. for hours yeah. i can do that for hours but it takes me an hour to get out it of it took that. me a long time to get him to sit like this like he's super capable but like just slouch oh, more okay. slouch more slouch more he's like, right. like but wow. he did a great job in the end he was willing to sit for me twice to get that pose that's, that's so a good, good one so good we yeah. I hate to say it, Paul, but we are like two minutes away from the show oh. ending, and I oh. had to show this picture. What sculpture is that? <laughs> I feel like I had to blend in with your vibe. So many of your <laughs> your artists that you have on are are uh, kind of horror sculptors in the most amazing way, and I was like, this is as close as I get with some theater makeup. Oh, that's fantastic. Awesome. See that? You just did lots of feathers in your cap. That's for sure. Maybe I'll sculpt that one day. There you go. Yeah, we'll, oh. we'll, we'll, you'll, you'll be popular around Halloween. That's for sure. Yeah, let's Halloween. do the challenge there. We'll do a wheel challenge, and we'll, we'll put picture of Christina on the wheel. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the um, although we do only have a couple minutes left, I wanted to just really quick look at Paul's because um, I know. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm blocking. Really I'm blocking, buddy. And the yeah, light's man. not doing it justice. It actually feels like it's coming along better than it is, and. Not so good now. So the blocking stage obviously is the worst one, but I got some ways to go. I'm going to go in that direction of he's not going to be, he, it's more going to be more like a shrunken head or like I'm going to do lots of stitches and there you go. But he has to be robust. So I have to be careful and slow if what I'm removing, because if I go too fast, then he's going to be anorexic, which is yeah. not robust. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, so slow yeah, and steady wins race. Same here. I, I mean, mine, 
I guess I can't really say much about mine. Mine's kind of in the same same position as yours, Paul. I mean, like, I'll, I'll see if I can zoom in. Mine mine has a long way to go. Um, really, just blocking up. I'm trying to think of fat. Like, or, okay, sorry, robust. I'm trying robust. to think of somebody where he's got kind of a mushed face in the middle, but then I want to give him kind of the voodoo vibe. Maybe one of those voodoo priests with the. Anyway. Oh, nice! That would be cool. We shall see. We shall. Good, because I thought you were going to say that you were also doing a shrunken head type thing, and I was going to be, oh, fantastic! Time to switch gears. No, but I mean, you know, they almost look a little bit like they're on the same. But this beautiful. It's a beautiful round thing. surface. It it's is. Literally, and, and it, the beginning of these things never look like the end of them. I promise. So, no, no. Let's okay. listen. I'll, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Now that I have pumpkins, I'll time lapse everything. So. Uh, hopefully that'll make a difference when it comes to the uh, the finished product. Well, oh, oh, we have come to the end of another show. And uh, Christina, this is where you can be found. Is there any place else people can go to see your amazing work? My basement. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, if you want to give your address, that's on you. I do not. Do not come to my basement, anyone. <laughs> <laughs> No, not yet. Mostly, I'm mostly on Instagram. That's my my main place. So follow me. Yeah, again, um, uh, it's, it's a great, great account. I, I enjoy watching it thoroughly, and I look forward to seeing more. Hopefully, the show has inspired you to do 25 minutes to 10 hours a day in your shop. And I'm somewhere in the middle, gonna lay the pumpkin on my wheel. There, there you go. go. We want, yeah, we want it. We want video of that. That's going to be amazing. I, 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 I really do want to see that. Well, and this is where you can find us. We are on all the little silly buttons on the bottom there. Um, we got to we got to update the first one though, huh? It's not called Twitter anymore. It's called some X. Right. Called X. X. We all know what it means. We don't need an X. We well, you know it's Twitter. Yeah, it's still a bird, in my my opinion, but whatever. But yeah, <laughs> all those places. But we have like you know a, a, a catalog, a library. Would you say maybe of, of shows? But we can't thank you enough, Christina, for joining yeah. us tonight. This was this has been. A treat because we we've been like admiring your stuff for so long and um and this was just an absolute blast oh, to hang out can i say can i give one little plug you know you know jordu jordu shell who you all know oh, yes the great jordu we love jordu he's, he's uh, going to be a co-presenter with me at claycon west whoa i, I know wow. you guys know him and so uh he just signed on and we're going to be presenting together on stage for a couple days and i, I i've oh. never met him but we're going to be right next to each other and i get to learn a ton from him and you um, are going to love jordu he is yeah. a first of all he's an amazing artist but he is a very very funny funny guy you do he's fun to hang out he's a great guy to hang out with nice i'm very looking forward to it it's in utah in january and everybody should come wow yeah bring your yeah. bring your snowboard yeah, bring your snowboard or maybe a, a warm hat. That'd be good. Yes, it might be. Oh, yes, that's so cool. It's Southern hat. Utah, it's not that cold. Oh, so it's, yeah, it's like Florida. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's um, awesome. That's that's great. I can't believe you hung on to that for so long. That's that's yeah, a, that's big did. news. That's where people can yeah, find you too. I mean, they can come see you if they're in Southern that's Utah. That's true. And I'm doing one in South Carolina as well. Jordu will not be at that one, but uh, I'm uh, presenting at a conference in South Carolina in February. So wow. that's our, another, our, I did forget about those things. Our buddy Pat Cavanaugh says Jordan, and then he makes make sure he he, he made it really Jordan. But yeah. see, that's an iPhone. That's an so iPhone right there. Typing, you know. <laughs> My sentences make zero sense when I look at them after I think I've typed them correctly. Yeah. Well, you know, I can't thank you enough. We'd love to have you back somewhere down the road. Maybe, like I said, maybe we'll do. Maybe we'll, we'll do pumpkin. clay. Maybe you do pumpkin. We'll, we'll we can figure something out. <laughs> Fun. Well, thanks for having me. It's a, it's an honor. I'm, yeah. Oh, great. thank you. Thank you. The honor is all ours. Well, yep. for myself, Matt, we thank you for uh, tuning in, and we're going to see you next Thursday with another Carvers and Creators. So, yes. good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night.